going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. This is our weekly show where we review the magic stories. And this week we are back with another chapter from The Gathering Storm by Django Wexler, specifically chapter 11. My quick review at the top of this one was, I thought this one was fine. Uh, I'm sure it is setting us up for a lot going forward, so I'm sure it will be important to know the things that it is setting up, although it itself in the future might not necessarily be one that I would look back on and go, oh my god, you remember that awesome thing that happened in chapter 11? It, it was informative, but uh, like I said, I don't know that it's going to be anybody's favorite chapter, per se. Amy, what about you? What are your thoughts? Um, it's a good piece of a larger story that is good. Um, it is not what I would call a, an actual story on its own. Right. I feel like a lot of the previous chapters have been a story, each singularly, mm -hmm. um, even if they didn't necessarily have their own specific, you know, rising action, climax, <laughs> falling action, resolution, you know, or whatever. Um, they still felt like a cohesive story that began and ended. Um, this one was just purely informational. Um, nothing super cool happened. You know, it was just kind of information that we'll need to know. Um, and if you recall any of our previous jars, um, which I'm sure you probably do, um, we don't necessarily like being told things so much as shown things. Um, and that's typically what we kind of say is not necessarily the best writing. Um, but I think in this case it was probably just, again, uh, a good piece of a larger story that is good. Um, so it's, it, it's not a bad story, it's just a much better chapter. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, uh, so if our quick reviews mean anything to you in terms of whether you have not read the story yet, feel free to look it up, The Gathering Storm by Django Wexler, like I said. This in particular is chapter 11, but if you haven't read the first 10 chapters, this one is probably not the one for you Definitely to start on. Not. Definitely uh, but, not. But just, you know, if you haven't gotten to this point yet, if, if for some reason you're following along with us, um, feel free to go check out that chapter and then come back here to us. Um, so, on to the full review itself. I thought, I think after the kind of mini climax that was last week, obviously it's not the climax of the entire novel, but it was a climax of sorts mm -hmm. um, that kind of led us into what will be the next arc of this novel. Um, and so I think, as we were kind of talking about, I think that this chapter was warranted in what it did because you did have a big... Um, you know, the Guild Summit itself, it was arguably what the first nine chapters were leading to was that tenth chapter. And so now you have this eleventh chapter for the start of what is literally the second half of the story trying to tell you what we're working towards for the latter half. So I think it made sense, um, despite the fact that, like we said, it wasn't... I don't right. know. Well, it wasn't his own story. It was just right. a piece of a story. Right. It was. It was the. It was the introduction, if you will, to this second half. Which and is fine. In that, I think it did a fine job of it. Yes, um, it absolutely did. And it it also gave us more information, which I appreciate. It gave us more information on Rawl's past. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know what world he was in because he had planeswalked. Right. He also has not yet. I guess, realized that he can planeswalk or realize that that is what he did because it seems like he just showed up on that other world, healed up, lived there, well, realized he that he was in a different place. Well, he knew that he was most... He most likely knew that he was on a different world, but he didn't seem to know how he got there and he didn't seem to, with, uh, with years or um, experience in any way... Um, seem to planeswalk a second time and, right. and and figure out what that was or how to do it. Right, and that's that's kind of interesting to me that, you know, he it does it seems like 
the way that I read it, and seemingly the way that re we read it, um, he just he doesn't get it. He doesn't fully understand. And yes, especially because, like, you know, he asked about the district, like, what district are we in? And the guys are like, we don't know what the hell you're talking about, guy. You must be from really far away. And uh, and then Raul, like, sees what they're using for currency and knows that it's not at all the Xenos that he's used to from Ravnica. So, you know, that whole concept um, is new to him um and so but we're we're going back and forth in this story as opposed to following one character all the way through which is technically what we're doing we're following Rahl from beginning to end but instead of swapping between like Rahl and Verasco or Rahl and Kaya or some combination of the group um we're with Rahl from beginning to end but it is Rahl present day if you will or present time uh of this story in Nivix dealing with the fallout from uh, Isperia's death and him dreaming of his past through him catching quick catnaps at his desk, it seems, uh, as everyone is working uh, vehemently, fervishly, feverishly, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, to get this new project done uh, that we learn more about towards the latter end of the chapter itself. Um, I thought it was, I thought Rahl was a lot more vicious in this one, both in the flashbacks, but also even in present day. I mean, like, he gets stopped by those thugs, which granted, those thugs, the two thugs in the new plane, right, he's sitting there possibly bleeding out, right? He's just planes walked. He was he, having a real bad day. Right, and they both... Uh, his boyfriend was cheating on him. <laughs> he was bleeding to death. Yeah, he got stabbed after... He was after, getting mugged by these two guys. <laughs> he got stabbed after almost killing... Or, or right before he almost killed a child. Right. Um, that, was a, that was a very long, very bad day. Right. So I don't blame him for his reaction of just crackling down lightning and presumably, they didn't tell us this, but presumably but killing those two men, especially because of the fact that the knives were then partially melted and the boots were still smoking. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would have happened to two guys that he just, like, gave a loving pat to, you know? <laughs> uh, I think he killed them. So those two are dead. Uh, I thought that was pretty brutal. Uh, again, not undeserved, but still brutal. No, I was all about it. <laughs> You would. You would be all about that. <laughs> yep. That's fair. Um, and then, I don't know, there was another moment that I'm sure I'm sure I will uh, come up to. Um, I'm sorry, did I? No, not at all. No, 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 no. I, it's just in different sections. Oh, and then, it, I, guess, it, I guess it is still in the past, but uh, with his new boyfriend, again, in the past, his new boyfriend, uh, mm -hmm. Harith, and the thugs that Harith has when... Rahl decides that it's time for him to leave, and he just kind of blasts those two dudes, too. He's like, whatever, I have nothing more to learn here, you mean nothing to me, blam, and he just takes care of both of those dudes, and who knows, maybe Harith as well? It was kind of unclear, I feel like, um, because I he just... I assumed not, but I guess that was just an assumption. I don't know, I really don't. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but the, the thugs were kind of coming up the stairs, and Rahl had, I guess, like, his own makeshift accumulator on his back that he used to, like, generate electricity so that he could blast it at those guys. <sighs> while we're talking about Rahl, while we're talking about electricity and Rahl's abilities with electricity, I want to get something off my chest for just a second. Oh, boy. And I'm curious if you had the same feeling or not, or if you all had the same feeling or not. In this story, I believe, and I don't have chapter and verse in terms of exactly when it happened, but I believe this is the third time in this novel that we have heard that Rahl did something and then had lightning crackling across his teeth when he smiled. Yeah. The third time. Why? Why three times? The first time, it's like, oh, that's new, that's interesting, that's cool, that's his character. The second time, it's like, oh, interesting, call back to the last time that happened, okay. Third time, it's like, all right. There's no other representation of lightning on his body that you could reference besides the teeth thing. It's three times. I just, I don't know. To me, three times I felt like was excessive. The point is that just happens every time. And we're only on chapter 11, so I feel like I'm a little afraid that like we're going to get it many more times before the end of the novel. I just, it felt unnecessarily repetitive, repetitive to me. 
I don't think so. You disagree? All right, that's fair. And like I said, it's, it's it, the description of the scene that you're supposed okay. to be viewing. Well, and right, fair. And also, I guess it goes along with my next comment, gripe, concern, question of uh, the crackling, the hand through the hair, and the crackling making it stand on end. That's been many more than three times. I don't know. I feel like I'm getting a little tired of it uh, as, as a descriptor. It, maybe it's his thing. It's like his tick that like, he's like, oh, my hair's messed up, you know, and like, you know, gets it back to the way that he likes it. So that wasn't as... He's the con fans. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah. That wasn't as, as concerning to you then, obviously? No. Okay, fair enough. Let, let us know. I mean, uh, you know, that's a, a difference between us. It's clearly not something we're arguing about. It's just, you know, I feel one way, Amy feels another. Let us know. what Which way do you feel? Not who's right, just, just you know, what, what opinion right. do you have? Of course. Amy's always right. <laughs> that's how that works. We're married now. <laughs> Amy is always right. I'm not stupid, but but also also if you've watched the show, Amy's just always right because she's smarter than I am. So you know, there's that as well. Not true. It's definitely true in a lot of respects. Um, then we get to still in the flashback, I guess. Uh, he gets an apprenticeship with this old man named Gaz, um, and there's a moment where he's talking with this new boyfriend, significant other. Uh, Dude. Yeah, a guy that he's sleeping with. Um, Harith. And he's talking with Harith, and Harith says, <laughs> it was a moment where Amy and I both were like, oh, crap. Uh, when Harith says, you know, what about your deal with, what about your apprenticeship with Mr. Gaz or whatever? And Raul pauses for a second and looks at Harith and says, I didn't tell you, wait, the quote is, I didn't tell you who I was working for. And both of us were like, Oh my Shit. god, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> this is very bad. And at first I was like, is it Bolus again? Like, did he follow him to the new plane? Like, well, I had like, no idea what was happening. Before that point, when he was, like, describing Harris and everything, I was like, okay, he's just being paranoid. <laughs> like, he's so, he's so, like, you know, just that way. Mm -hmm. which, I felt Which similar. would make perfect sense, yeah. because... You have bolus up your ass, so it's like you can't ever be <laughs> trusting of anyone, right? But then it turned out to not be a trustworthy guy. <laughs> well, he didn't. He doesn't. He doesn't know then, or didn't know then, what he knows now about bolus. He just, you know, is kind of somewhat, I assume, distrusting of him, but also yeah. like. You know, it could have just been his own fault. But he's definitely distrusting of relationships. I mean, we learned that big time. Um, that kind of Tomic was the first one recently to allow him that freedom. Um, and it's because of uh, Elias and now um, Harith that, you know, this guy at first, he was like, all right, uh, I'm letting my guard down a bit. He's with me. I don't quite know why he's with me, but he is. I'm not really going to question it. And then... The first moment is just, I didn't tell you who I was working for. How do you know who I was working for? And you, you feel that moment in Raw where he's just like, you want something, right? Like, that's the only reason why you were with me. You want something. I'm not, which has to suck. Yeah. Because it's, you got cheated on the last time with somebody who seemed to legitimately appreciate you, but you were out doing things for him to allow him to further his career, and he's sleeping around on you and or, you know, making out around on you. Um, and you feel betrayed by that. And now you found another guy who you now... Uh, the second time I have to imagine that his feeling is that, like, it's him now, right? The first time it may have just been that Elias is a bad person, but now Harith is doing it as well. And that has to cut kind of deep personally for Rawl, and why would Raul be willing to trust a third partner later on down the line? Because he's been burned twice now. Right. And ba pretty badly. I mean, you know, I guess the... I mean, the second time wasn't pretty badly, but, like, the fact that it happened was the bad part. The Har This one? The Harith yeah. one? It's just, it's just, you know, it, it, it has to make Raul question the entirety of the relationship. Because even if Harith turns around and says, no, I actually liked you, you know, you know, or that thing that you, excuse me, that you hear in movies all the time where somebody says, um, I like, you know, I, I, I was here to do a job, but I actually started liking you or whatever. 
that just didn't seem to be what happened here, nope. despite the fact that... No, nope. he was just like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'll stop the ruse then. Right, but, well, with Harith, yes, but it also seemed like once he had done the deal with Harith and actually decided to go against Mr. Gaz or Gaz or whatever, um, he then seemed to stay with him for a little while. Yeah. Right? Maybe. So, well, that's what it seemed like, because then, obviously, then Raul leaves, and that's when Harith well, stops him. I guess they were... Oh, no, I guess not. He said they it's were, like, a, sleeping together. It's a one-time deal. Uh, yeah. So, because I was going to say, they were doing a deal together, so, of course, they're going to be together for a little while because they're working on this deal. But it's just a one-time thing if you're stealing from this guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Unless they're selling the, the stuff in parts. Right, like fencing it or whatever you want to call it from the you know, on the black market or whatever they have to do based on what they're yeah, like taking. Yeah, they have a lot of merchandise and they're not able to sell it quickly, then I could see why they would still be together for a little while. Even if they're not sleeping together, they're just, you know, working together at that point. Yeah. It's it's all a, a weird situation for sure. But yeah, um, I'm definitely similar to that, like not being trusting of of people doing nice things for me. That you, you're always in the back of your mind, you're wondering what their agenda what is want. behind it. That That is unfortunate, but I think a pretty common thing. Um, but it is, again, it's unfortunate because it just, uh, to me, it just kind of shows the situations that people have been in in their lives that that's how they feel about things. Yep. And again, it's it's simply just unfortunate. Yeah. So. Like, I have a co-worker who is um, more affluent, let's say, than the rest of us. Um, you know, um, he does the same job that I do, but his wife has a much better job. Um, and so they have quite a bit more money than the rest of us do. Um, so, but he will buy coffee for one of my other co-workers, but then she'll buy coffee for him to kind of make up for it and stuff like that. But if he ever tries to, like, do something nice for me, you know, buy me whatever or stuff like that, I'm always, like, uh, like, the first thing I think of is, like, okay, why are you buttering me up? Like, something's going on. Right. You know? Okay, that's fair. And, and, and again, I, I'm I'm sure that there are many people who feel that way for a, an array of reasons as well. That that that's kind of what their default is. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of interesting because again, I mean, we've been talking a lot with this novel about real world comparisons, and there's a big one. And and trust was I I, I think we'll get back to it at the end as well. Um, I didn't notice it as much of a heavy theme until at the end when it was kind of told to us more than w when it was spoon fed to us, which I was a little upset by that it took me that long to kind of get to that realization of the fact that this chapter was talking a lot about trust one way or the other. But, um, but yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll get back to that at the end. Um, then in present time, if you will, uh, we had Rawl talking to Niv because Niv seemed to have called him in. Uh, and Niv, getting a little pissy, uh, says, you know, you failed, and this is, you know, it seemingly like these are the consequences, and Rawl's like, actually, I haven't failed yet, um, and kind of lays out the new plan, and what they're going to be doing now, um, right. and, excuse me, and, and talking about how the different guilds are in relation to their plan, whether they're, because he says there are six guilds that are willing to work with them, that includes the is it. There are two guilds that are neutral, who will probably not resist them, but are not going to actively assist, and two that seem openly hostile towards them. And uh, the neutral two being Simic and Selesnia, mm -hmm. and the two hostile being Golgari and Gruul, and of course, because those are the two hostile uh, uh, guilds, those are the two guilds that they have to go into those two guilds' territories to place nodes to, I don't know, kind of 
empower the ley lines in that area or right. better focus them um, in order for their plan to, to work, which is to some in some way manipulate the foundations that Azor laid down um, to alter the Guild Pact in some way. Yeah. So... Uh, I said he should just... Ask that girl from Pitch Perfect, because she has nodes. She had nodes, but yeah. Pitch Perfect won, well, because th there have been two since. I, I oh, think was she... the second one? No, it was the first one. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. She, she, There were two since, and I believe she got over the nodes, or at least the nodes in the first one was what allowed her to, to sing bass after they right, had fixed. We're, we're on a tangent too much now. I mean, you I, brought it up. I, I just wanted to say one sentence. I don't want it to be a whole thing. <laughs> Referential comedy. Um, so, and then he kind of brings the six guilds together to talk about this plan, he being Rahl, of course, to talk about this plan. And I loved the fact, again, talking about trust, I loved the fact that Dovin is sitting right there, and we all know that's bad, right. but Rahl doesn't. And Rahl's like, well, we knew there would be uh, some spies of Bolas here, and we found out who it is. And it's like, you heard yourself, right? <laughs> you said some spies, plural, and then you're like, so we found Veraska, we're done. Mm. No, sir, because the guy sitting at your table who's like, of course we'll do exactly what you say. Why would we do anything different? Well, because you're working for both sides. You're playing both sides here, Dovin. And I'm sure that that was part of Bolas's plan as well, of course. Was, was put all the suspicion on Veraska so that no know. one's looking at Dovin. And especially because... Well, but that's not even part of his plan. He knows that's going to happen. Dovin is the cool, calm, collected, spots, flaws, and everything mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. And Verask is the Gorgon. So mm -hmm. he doesn't have to do anything but sit back and relax. She will be the one automatically ostracized and scapegoated while Dovin Bon is two-faced. Well, and to use a magic term... Uh, Bolas got a two for one because not only is all the suspicion on Veraska now and all the finger pointing pointed towards Veraska, but Veraska killed Isperia, which then allowed Dovin to come in in the first place. So that one act did two beneficial things for Bolas and his plan. So, I mean, it, you know, that's super typical Bolas that it okay. worked out that way and or that's how he planned it in such okay. a way. Um, so, yeah, it makes perfect sense that that would be the case. It just sucks. Uh, and that kind of leads us to the ending of the story where, again, it was somewhat spoon-fed to us. And I I'm sorry that I missed it until that point. But I liked that it kind of wrapped up with Rahl saying or, or pointing out the fact that, you know, thanks to Tomek and, as he said, some select few others, which I would say, based on these stories, would be Lavinia who he didn't technically mention, we haven't heard from in a little while, but right. seems like Lavinia. He mentions Hikara, which makes sense right. as well. Um, thanks to those people, he was starting to trust again. He was rebuilding, regaining that trust, and he had had that trust. He in, made friends in people who actually genuinely care about him, seemingly. Right, right. And, and he had built up that trust in, in so many people, including Veraska, and then Veraska so heavily betrayed that trust in the death of Isperia. And obviously it's a lot more than what Rahl understands, but right. that's the point. Is that since Rahl doesn't understand, he is only left to his own right. thoughts, opinions, and understandings, and he feels understandably right, betrayed. Veraska didn't like go over to Rawl's house and, like, knock on his door and say, hey, Rawl, like, I'm planning on killing Isperia because I think she's a fucking bitch or whatever. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> she just did it. Yep. And, and he was like, oh, what the hell? Well, and especially, like, again, sure, the Isperia part, but even even more I so... I mean, I totally get why she killed her because <laughs> I would have killed her too. But even more so, but... it's, it's, the, it's the whole... Veraska feeling like there was no other option because Jace wasn't back yet. That's the story that they're trying to tell is that like Veraska was sitting there waiting for Jace. Which is stupid. <laughs> Jace never she's showed. She's not a needy little girl. She's Captain Veraska. It's true. Bitches. It's true. What? Jesus. Very aggressive for right, in favor of Veraska tonight. Um. Every night. <laughs> 
that that's inappropriate. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> only as inappropriate as you want it to be. Um, so I mean, and again, it, we haven't heard from Tomic in a little bit. We haven't heard from Lavinia in a little bit. So I'm curious to see how and when those two will come in. Not necessarily at the same time, of course, but how those two will play into the next now half of this novel um, and what that means for this plan. I mean, obviously we know more parts of this plan if we've read War of the Spark, which I won't get into now, but... Um, I was thinking a lot there about are... Tomek because... Were you? Because I was like, ah, uh, if he's spending so many nights... That's right. Not with Tomek. Like, what is Tomek up to? Or well, he's not even talking to him? Well, Tomek would have had to know, right? Because well, yeah. Teza is a confidant of Kaya's, and Kaya knows what happened to Isperia. I assume most of, if not all of Ravnica knows what happened to Isperia at this point. Um, just because I'm sure that stuff uh, gets leaked out pretty easily. Um, but... With that, I'm sure, I would say, my assumption is that Tomek knows what's going on with Rahl, why he's not home, and understands it. But, I'm I not don't... saying that he does Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, and, and, and we also don't know it. So it's a, it's a fair point that, you know, thinking of him a lot would make sense. Yeah. Even though it wasn't mentioned literally at all. No. His, well, his name was mentioned once when Rahl said... I was regaining trust thanks to Tomek and others. Right. right. That's just Right. That's even though that's a completely separate thing from what he was experiencing at the time. <laughs> right. Which would have been, gee, I miss my boyfriend Tomek. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Well, you know what, though? Uh, arguably, I guess it depends, but arguably, um, Rawl might not have missed Tomek because he just didn't have time. If you notice, what he mentioned in terms of what he missed was his bed. He was like, my, man, my bed sounds real nice right about now. Yeah, you know who's in his bed? Tomek. <laughs> yeah, but he, just, but he just wants to sleep because he's just so tired from doing all this care. work. It just, that's Miss very... Miss your boyfriend, asshole. That's just, it's just very typical, is it? Right? That, like, you would get so caught up in your work that, like, everything else would take a back seat. That's, that's how I picture the is it guild working. No. Is that, like... You're just like, this is my mission. This is what I have to do. I need to see it through. Screw everything else. I'm, I'm sleeping. I'm doing whatever. So. Nah, that shit rude. <laughs> so that is uh, this story. I do want to say before we close it off, um, just some things about us. First of all, we were able to announce it, I guess, yesterday on Twitter. Um, for those of you that did not see, there is another early access preview stream coming up for Throne of Eldraine. That will be this coming Tuesday, September 24th. I cannot guarantee you what time we are starting. It will be here on the YouTube channel. I can say five o'clock-ish. Uh, it, it depends on how work goes. Uh, if there are things that require me to stay, I will have to stay. Uh, but I should be able to, to leave around five-ish uh, and get back, or I'm sorry, be back here to start around five-ish. Um, Amy and I will be able to have a very quick dinner beforehand and then start the stream and see all of you and and try out the new sealed for yes. Throne of Eldraine, which seems very, very awesome and interesting. Um, that is sponsored. We have been chosen by Wizards of the Coast as one of the featured streamers. We thank them for that so opportunity, much. as we always do, and for that sponsored content that we are then going to be able to produce to show all of you, and we would love for you to come in the chat, suggest um, some things, yes, uh, some plays that you would like us to play, some picks that you would like us to use uh, from our sealed events, because we are going to be playing sealed all day, that are all night. Uh, that is what we do. No standard here. There will be many talented standard brewers out there, and we encourage you to go check them out as well. Um, but I would also love to hear from you guys. Uh, about uh, whether you loved or hated the trailer that got released, <laughs> um, what you think of the cards that have been... Uh, I, I don't want to say spoiled. Previewed. Previewed. Thank, Thank you. you. Good point. Yep. Um, so, yeah, uh, what, what you think of the cards that have been previewed, um, what ones are your favorites and why. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I want to hear that stuff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely give that to us, give that information, either in the comments of this video or come or on to the, the stream chat. and come chat with us. The us and your fellow viewers, um, and all of that, whether we're streaming day of, 
whether it's in the comments of any of these jar videos, any of our other videos, it's a great way to show off your... Hashtag Vorthos Pride. I usually do that right before we end, but I do have one other thing. If you missed our multitude of other announcements of it, uh, we started another YouTube channel. It will not be impacting this channel in any way, so don't worry, except that occasionally we will talk about it on this channel. But we started a Video Games For All channel, so you can go check that out. That will be, the subscription thing will be here somewhere on the screen for all of you to click. Um, but also the playlist should be up for our uh, inaugural series on the channel, which is Amy and I playing through Pokemon Red from the original Game Boy, the original Pokemon Red. Uh, it is Amy's first time playing any mainline Pokemon game that is not actual Pokemon Go. Um, and so... You should definitely check it out. There have been some very interesting episodes. Uh, we're only about four in, so it's definitely a good time for you to jump in on that. If that is something that interests you, I but think you'll enjoy There are definitely it. a lot of fun moments. Yes, um, and funny oh moments. Oh, my God. And if, if you have any familiarity with the games, it's better. But if you don't know the games... Come, then you're in the same boat as me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so come watch and see if you agree with some of Amy's assessments. Either way, really, whether you're familiar or not familiar, see if you agree with Amy's assessments. Because we've we've gotten some very positive feedback from people uh, about enjoying the show, and it we're yes, we're thank really you so grateful. Much. Yeah, we're really grateful for that. So so definitely go check that out. One, it helps us out a lot, but more importantly, we really hope you enjoy it. Yes. So feel free to subscribe over there. Subscribe over here. You guys know how YouTube works, uh, and we hope to see you for our sponsored preview stream uh next tuesday or this coming tuesday like i said around 5 p.m that's eastern standard time here in the u.s because that's where we are right. so you know hopefully you will be able to join us for any and all of that because we are gonna as always be going until we drop uh <laughs> both of us will have work the next day but yes. we will do our best to stay as long as possible i go to work very early in the morning i usually wake up around 4 a.m mm -hmm. um so <laughs> i will hang in there as long as i can mm -hmm. joe usually stays on stream a little bit longer than i do mm -hmm. uh for the sake of you know drawing it out just a bit more <laughs> yep. um past the point where i just can't take it anymore yeah. we just do as many seals as we can have tons of fun Jump in the chat. We have tons of fun people that come and join us. Either fans like yourself, friends who are also fans, etc. Uh, so on definitely, I, I ask a couple of my coworkers to hop on and just say hi. So one of our old streams, we had a, a an old friend from high school just pop on out of nowhere, which was awesome. So you know, definitely come join us for that. We would really appreciate it. We hope you enjoy it as well. Uh, come see how the new sealed environment looks yes. in advance of your pre-release and or you playing some sealed on MTG Arena. So That way you can work on your strategy before you even get to the pre-release. Well, you can, you can definitely learn what not to do. <laughs> that, that's what I mean. Process of elimination strategy. It's like, wow, that's the decision Joe made? We'll just not do that ever. Yep. That's all right. I'll make the mistakes That's so you fine. don't have to. How's exactly. that? Exactly. <laughs> so, yes, please come join us for that. Thank you all so very much for watching this episode of JAR. Like I said, any and all thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, down in the comments below. Check us out Facebook and Twitter. Those links are in the description as well. And from the Geek for All Now family of channels, I have been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.